Hello and welcome to Two Girls in a Pod. I'm Sharon. I'm Christy. And we are doing our first uh, video cast, uh, so we hope you guys enjoy it. But today's topic is it's kind of a little bit more of a serious topic. Um, it's kind of something that we're going through, and, and I think even more so you're going through. I'm just hopefully being supportive of it. Yeah. Um, so my my mom has been really ill. Um, she's uh, in the final stages of liver failure um, and has been going through this for quite some time. It's been quite a battle. So we decided to talk a little bit about that because I think that when it comes to end of life decisions and things like that, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to navigate that. Well, I think it's sometimes to know when is the right time and what does quality of life look like? You know, all of those things that we've talked about that have been really tough conversations to have and and knowing that we're not the only people who this is going on with. Right. And I think, you know, I mean, I have my brothers that I can talk to and ask them questions and things like that. And some people are, you know, don't even have that. But it's good to have other people's input sometimes. And um, but I know that it's it's a struggle for people. I mean, to know what to do and to navigate that. My in my mom's situation, she's uh, has a lot of confusion and things like that that's happening. So, I mean, we talked about you know some of the things that she would want, but just like I say, when it comes down to it, and people are asking you questions and that, you always want to make the right decision for that person, and it's difficult when it's not your yourself, you know. Well, I think the other thing that is so hard is, you know, always wanting to respect somebody's wishes, you know, because there's emotion in that. There's a lot of emotion for you. Exactly. Um, And I know I have, I've talked uh, before about my dad passed back in like 2007. And when he was, he had uh, pancreatic cancer. And when he was going through that process, certain decisions that he had to make and they had to ask him, you know, about as far as treatment Mm -hmm. and things like that. And he came to us and asked questions, too, like, you know, what would you do if it was you? And we both had to have that serious conversation with him about and you have to like take yourself out of it because, you know, you want to say, well, I want you to be here as long as you can. Exactly. But you have to remember that they're the ones that are going through that. And I think the other thing that's important to realize is is the personality of that that individual. Because for your dad, he was such an active individual as my dad was. They were always out doing stuff and things like that. And, you know, when he had that conversation with me, which I was really honored because in, in the, the years I've been with you, your dad... And I didn't have a lot of those moments where we were actually just alone talking. So it was a little bit different. But, and I remember I told him, I said, you are such an active person. If you do this, it will prolong your life. But I don't know if you're going to have that same degree of activity. And if you don't have that same degree of activity, what is that going to be like for you? Exactly. So they were asking him if he wanted to do the treatments and that and, you know, told him all of the side effects and things that were going to happen. And so when he came in and talked to me about that, even I was like, you know, I as much as I want you here, I said, I don't want you to suffer any more than you have to. And if, you know, that does not improve your quality of life, that's something you have to take into consideration And I think the difference was, too, is you could have that conversation with him, whereas because your mom is really full of a lot of confusion and stuff and she's not at that place to make those decisions, that decision making has fallen on you. For me, with my mom, my my mom did go into hospice care. And, you know, one of the things is, is her was so advanced, her age, you know, we you, you look at you age plays a role in that all of these things. And 
where is it at with that? The the thing with your mom is she really doesn't want any more treatment. She's she's tired, you know. She doesn't want the scope. She doesn't want the and I get it. And 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 being respectful of that I think is really important. Exactly. I mean, because, you know, as someone that loves and cares about the person you want to say, hey, there's all these treatments that can be done or things like that. But you have to realize when the person that is going through it is tired and, you know, she has been struggling with this for some time. So she's been adamant that she doesn't want to continue with, you know, the scopes and all the things that they would have to do to help her um, to even sustain, you know, where she's at. And so it's been a really difficult road and to know what to do. I appreciate that I have such great support in my life. Well, and I think it, there's, there's just so many variables that go into it, you know, and like I said, how do we respect somebody's wishes and, you know, and it's, and I know it's difficult even for the doctors because she, re, she doesn't want any more treatment. Mm-hmm. And, and as the doctor, I think he says, I can do these treatments and I think they will work and I think they will make it better but she's just not there. And, you know, and, and so I get it. So it's kind of the, walking this really weird line. Um, cause the only treatment she wants right now is blood transfusions. Cause she, her body's no longer making blood the way that it's supposed to. So every few days she has to go get blood transfusions in order to, uh, to live basically. Yeah. And that's what they've said, you know, I mean, it's already to the degree that they have talked about hospice. Um, I appreciate what those people do. They were great for my dad. But it's it, the doctor has said that, you know, without these transfusions, she would probably suffer. And so we've decided to continue on with that for now, um, not knowing if that's going to continue to have the benefit that it does now because they've explained that over time how the body accepts that it it's not your blood so it's a little bit different so yeah and because it's been happening for a while uh apparently the body develops like antibodies to the the blood that they're giving the blood that they're giving and then it's Mm -hmm. you have to go find another match you know we had that conversation with the doctor uh and would really appreciate that he spent so much time talking to us and, and helping us to understand this and also appreciating that his hands are tied with a lot of things as far as the treatment goes. And But even with that, you know, when we talked about quality of life, you know, and, and the thing is, is, so does that look like if she has to have a transfusion every other day, then quality of life? Because when she doesn't have those transfusions, she has more confusion. She has, it, it's not a pleasant experience for her. Well, a lot of times she sleeps. She gets so weak because the blood levels are so low. So she's not able to interact and have that quality of life unless she has the transfusion. So when she has them, um, because this has been going on for a while, the effects of it last for less time, but it gives her those opportunities to laugh and visit, you know, her brother goes to visit her quite often, and he'll always call me, and she gets to talk to me on the phone, and even though there's so much confusion, and she she gets lost, and, and that, I don't mind, because she's still laughing, and there's still, you know, life there. And I know it was hard for you when, when, when I had the conversation with you about, you know, because we had tried talking with her the day before or something, and the nurse was so great to do a video call with us, mm-hmm. and she couldn't stay awake. It was, yeah, so it was really difficult. And then, you know, your your uncle goes, and then she's having that good time and where she was laughing and, and there. But, and then I asked you, I says, well, how good is quality of life? You know, is it if we get that time where we get to laugh for an hour, and then the rest of the time we're you know, sleeping or not really there or, you know, I think those are, that's such hard stuff. And, and I know it was a hard question for you because what does that quality look like? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the alternative though, to me, I feel like it's important for now. 
I know that the blood transfusions may not continue to have the same effect and we may have to change that plan. But No, I meant when I asked you that question about how much time is that quality, then you kind of sat back and you thought about that too. Mm -hmm. You know, she's only having five minutes. Right. Is that is that enough based on this what's going on internally? And even that, it was hard for the doctor to answer because she's refusing scopes and treatment and all of those things with gastroenterology and hematology. Yeah. It's hard to know what's going on internally with her when, you know, when your blood gets to a certain level and then it drops and does all of that. It's it I just can't imagine it's not doing something. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, and all of it is relevant and it's and it's like I said, not easy to know the right decisions to make and that, but I, I feel confident about this for the for mm -hmm. the time being. And like I say, that may change in the future. And I guess I have to give a little background to let people know she doesn't obviously she doesn't live where I live. Uh, we've been in Colorado for years now and and operate our own business here and that. But and she's in her home state of Alabama. She so, moved back there about three years ago or so? Yeah, something like that. So it's it's been really difficult because of the distance and that. Um, and she can no longer live independently in that. So she yeah. lives in a nursing home. It started out as an assisted living and then couldn't get her rehabilitated. rehabilitated. So yeah. then, so now she, has, she lives there and... Um, that's been a difficult thing for you as well. And I think there's a lot of these things. And I and once again, I know that, you know, when it comes to hospice care and when it comes to people that we love being in those situations of of their health declining and that, that there's a lot of people out there who have had these experiences and many who are probably going through that right now. Yeah. And it's such a struggle emotionally because like, after, you know, she had a few falls, and that is how she ended up uh, in the nursing facility to begin with and needing to do the rehabilitation. But then her decline in the situation has kept her there, and she's at the point that she's not able to be moved to a long for a long distance or that because she at first had talked to me and wanted to come back to Colorado, and I would have loved to have made that happen. And we did. We looked into it, and it was like the base rate was twenty three thousand dollars to fly her out to do a private uh, medical transport. Because that's how you would have to do it, and right. that's not even with the approval of the doctors or anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, right. But we said that we would do it, and we wanted to honor that and and look into it. And but her levels dropped so fast. You know, there's just a lot of that health stuff that's going on that I think is really impacting a lot of decision making, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I think that people have to understand that too and I know in my situation there was a time, you know, that I really struggled with there's family and friends they're concerned and I know that they were looking at the situation like there's all the distance in between you, you know, is there anything that you could do? to to change that, you know, or that. So I feel like that, and I'm sure it was me putting pressure on myself, not thinking, am, am I being supportive enough? Am I doing enough? Because others may think that I should be able to change this situation. But really, I it's not in my control. And I think the other thing that's really important is we never wanted her to move back, yeah. you know, but we had to honor and respect her decision mm -hmm. to move back. Right. You know, and it's not like we, you know, you can't go back and undo what's been done. And, and it's just a matter of how do you re respect those decisions and choices by people. Mm -hmm. That's where we, we kind of had to get to because I saw what it did to you. And so I was there like, hey, you know, we'll make this happen. We'll do what we have to to make it happen to where she could stay here. But at the end of the day, it was her choice to go back and to live her life in Alabama. Yeah. Yeah, so it's made it really difficult because it's from a distance. I mean, I've traveled back, um, and so I've seen her when I can and talked to her as much as I can. But it's been... It's been hard because of the distance and that. And like I say, me being 
um, in a situation where that they're asking me the questions, you know, what does she want and what should we do? And so that's been difficult to navigate. And I think that's so, that's such a, a tremendous amount of pressure on people because of that emotional piece that, the, because the person who's making those decisions, it's not like logic always plays a role in it. Mm-hmm. There's so much emotion in it. You know, this is your mom and, and even currently she's back in the hospital again. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things is, is with this uh, disease, the ammonia levels get too high and that creates a lot of confusion for her as well. So uh, she's back in the hospital right now um, and they're working to bring down her ammonia levels once again. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just par for the course with this particular disease, right. you know. And so that makes it hard because it's like, She's up, she's down, she's up, she's down. So mm-hmm. when she's down, you almost think it's easier to make those kind of decisions. But then she's up. So then it's like, whoa, wait a minute. I, I, It just messes with your head. It really does. So much. Yeah. Because then the next time I have a conversation with her and she's laughing, and even though there's confusion, you know, it feels... It feels it, like her? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, there she is. And I, I just, you know, want to maintain that for as long as we can. And I mean, I that makes so much sense to me. And I think that when people look at that, you know, those are the things that I think always make it so difficult. Mm-hmm. It was interesting because even with your dad, we had been there visiting. And that Saturday we went out, we did all these things to the flea market. Mm-hmm. We went and had dinner. We had this great time. And then we left Saturday morning. And by the time we left Saturday morning, he couldn't get out of bed. Right. It's 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 that fast for people. Yeah. And then he didn't, they put him into hospice and he didn't last very long. So we drove back to Colorado. Mm-hmm. Then there was, what, just a couple, three weeks or something like that. I don't, we, we made so many trips back and forth during that time. And then it was time to drive back to Alabama again. Yeah. And I think it's the emotion, it's the confusion, even on the part, on your part, and confused because, like I said, when you talked to her and when we talked to her the day before and she was just not responsive at all, it was really hard. So it looks like this, um, this is the end, doom and gloom. And then her brother goes there the next day or day after and she's laughing and stuff. So, yeah, and telling me she had been working in the kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we do get to laugh a lot. Of yeah. Stuff she's she laughing at that point too. So, you know. But some of the stuff she says and it's funny cuz when she she can't remember a word mm-hmm. or she throws another <laughs> word in, it's like yeah. she catches herself. Yeah, sometimes she does and she'll she'll think, "Well, that wasn't right." <laughs> she'll be saying something and she threw in file or something. <laughs> yeah. Like... So, we're still we're still able to laugh at some stuff. But, you know, end of life making decisions when when to put somebody in hospice and because you know when when it goes into hospice that it really is the end it's not it's not one of those things where somebody comes out of that that I know of you know yeah I'm I mean it's about making them comfortable and as possible and yeah so it's been and I guess we wanted to share this with the audience because Once again, we know that there are people out there who are probably in the same situation, who are really trying to navigate this and just know you're not alone, that, you know, it's it's a tough, tough place to be in. Yes. And understanding that, you know, people have talked a lot to me about what we call radical acceptance and basically understanding that. There are things that are completely out of our control. And as much as we want to change them, we're not able to. And even in those times, still having to make those decisions. And as difficult as it can be, I think, like I said, even for myself or anybody, I think we put more pressure on ourselves than we even realize because we're constantly, like I said, wondering if we're doing enough. Or wondering if other people think we're not doing enough. And sometimes even the questions that they ask makes you feel like you think I'm not doing enough. (laughs) 
you know, <laughs> but it's you that you, you take those things personally, even when they're probably not intended to be, you know, people are just talking to you out of concern or things like that. And you have to remember that. And it's hard sometimes because you are in such an emotional state and you are making such hard decisions. And I think that's the thing. They are very difficult decisions. And being able to have that radical acceptance for what those decisions mean and that and the radical acceptance that it is your decisions. You know, even when you talk to her brother, he always says, whatever you decide. Yeah. You yeah. know, I appreciate that. He's always which so is supportive. good. And it's like, OK, but I would like some. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So but I, but I understand it. And, and, it, and once again, it's so difficult to know what is the best decision not right or wrong because it's not a moral judgment it really isn't however everybody anybody makes that determination and stuff it's not a moral judgment in the least but how do I make the best decision for somebody that I care about and nobody likes the suffering that I think is the biggest thing is nobody likes to see those people suffer Mm -hmm. and having patience with yourself and still taking care of yourself through that time because sometimes, like I said, when it's out of your control, you feel like you want to be there, but you can't for whatever reason, whether it's work or or whatever's going on. Sometimes you feel like there's almost a guilt associated or those kind of things, but you have to be patient with yourself and kind and realize, you know, you're doing your best. And, you know, it's been... We've had our moments with it because sometimes you get very not emotional. If I don't know if it's that you kind of go into your own head and then you might become distant or you might become more argumentative or and then remembering though it because she's the one this is her mom. And so it's realizing that this is your process, but also reminding her you're not in this alone. Mm-hmm. You know, and I remember with my mom, I would have that. I would have those moments where I was just Mm -hmm. totally emotional. And but at the same time, so not only was my mom in hospice and this happening, and and I'm very grateful because she was in hospice with my sister, and I'm very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Um, And but we didn't have her long once she went into hospice. I think it was like five weeks. But I remember it's like every time you hear the phone ring or the, the ding of your thing. Uh, I told I even told yeah. you I said some, I had to go change my thing after my mom passed because I couldn't. Your message. I tone. could not do it. Mm-hmm. It was, it was just so hard on me. But very grateful every time she called and talked to me, even if it was for a few minutes. I didn't care. She didn't have the strength. A lot of times, I didn't care. I appreciate it. Kind of. Like you say, every time you have those moments, mm-hmm. it matters. And then you think, oh, okay, she's okay. And But there's that other part of you that, no, she's not okay. Right. It's, it's such a weird thing. But I even remember in that, in all of my emotional stuff, you know, sometimes being distant or whatever, because I had to hold everything together because I still was working that entire time. So I'm doing therapy. And I'm telling you right now, the universe has a sense of humor or something. I don't know what is. But I had, at that time, an influx of people dealing with grief and loss. And yeah. I'm there like, are you kidding me? You yeah. know, it was it was hard because, you know, still going there. Because I still have an obligation to the people that I serve. I really do. And I take that obligation seriously. But then I, by the time I would come home, I'm just like on edge. And I know it was hard for you as well. Mm-hmm. And and I remember that. And I, I try to use that now because the roles are now reversed. But I understand that in a different way because of that. And and I know that you have those moments. I see it. I see that sadness on you. I see that hurt and that and and just that internal dilemma of am I doing the right thing and stuff like that. But what I appreciate is that you talk more to me about it. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And you've allowed me to be a part of this journey. You've allowed me to talk with the doctors, to ask questions. And so just a background, I actually knew your mom before I knew you. Right. So I was actually friends with uh, Christy's mom before I met Christy. Mm -hmm. And so for me, 
she's been in my life about 20, almost 26 years because I met you, I don't know, you were off doing your thing. <laughs> I, well, it was about a year later. Yeah, so, yeah. That I actually met you. And mm -hmm. so, you know, your mom and I would go out to lunch and we'd just sit and talk and things like that. So I've had this long relationship with her. Yeah. And then when we got together, it got a little bumpy. Yeah. Just a little bit. But then, you know, I appreciate the fact that, you know, we now have this relationship. We have vacation together. And when we first got together, it was not that way, you know, because of her belief system and all of that. But at the end of the day, her love for you, you're her daughter. And, and that became the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, we have vacations. We've done Disney World. We've done Mexico. We've done California and Florida and, you know, Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> But those things, so we've had this wonderful relationship with her, I feel like, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's developed over time, and yeah. she always asks for you now and stuff, so. And, you know, we talk, and sometimes if she's agitated and, and you she won't listen to you, she'll listen to me or vice versa. And, and those are the relationships, and, and those are the things, and that's why it makes it hard because, you know, I think when you're going through this and you're thinking about people in hot, you know, that might go to hospice or they're towards the end of their life is I think you start getting that flood of memories, you know, you definitely do. And then it's like you remember those things and it's like, well, maybe they could do it again. You know, does that make sense? Because my mom's been battling this for so long. I did do that for a long time. You know, at that time, too, they were offering, you know, different solutions to to help minimize some of that and there were things that I I thought oh, she would just have taken advantage of this or that you know maybe maybe we wouldn't be where we are right now and her I mean I don't feel like 70 is old and she's no. she's 70 so I really feel like that's way too early to be going through this but we don't get a say in those things and some of the stuff, like I said, I wish that she had taken advantage of. Maybe we would be where we are. Maybe we wouldn't. Well, and I think the thing is, is once again, it comes to that thing where we have to just simply accept everybody's choices. It's their life. Yeah. They get to make those choices. We don't always have to like them. Right. And we can sit back there. And, and I think people often do sit there and say, oh, if this, had, this, this, and this had just happened. But we don't know that. The only thing we do know is that we've tried to be respectful of her choices. Exactly. And we've pushed sometimes, too, because we want, you know, where they're like, J just do this, you know. or Try this on. out. Let's do this. You know? Doctor's saying this will help. Let's do that. And and I get it. You know, once again, it's it's not our life. And, yeah. But here we are now, and now the decision of her life becomes yours. Mm -hmm. And so that's... That's such a heavy, it's, I don't know if I would call it a burden because I guess in a way it's a gift too. You know what I mean? Well, there's, you know, obviously the trust and that, you know, so I appreciate that, you know, she has talked to me and, and told me the things that are important to her um, as far as, you know, these kind of decisions. So I at least have had those conversations that has helped, but. You know, when you're actually living it, it's a little bit different still. Well, and like I said, you know, we know that people out there, you guys are going through this as well. And, and you know, just know that we get it and we support it and take time, talk to people about it. You know, use your resources, you know, don't no, I don't feel like anybody should have to do this alone. Yeah. Sometimes you have to ask for help. And it's so different because I come from such a large family where yours is so small. Yeah. And so for me, you know, when we found out about my mom's, you know, the kids, we went down. We got to go down and see her in Texas and, you know, really appreciate that. My poor sister having all of us there. Woo. <laughs> my poor mom. <laughs> it does help, I think, that you have, you know, you have um a troop to consult <laughs> and making some of those decisions. So I know. Huh? Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I realize it was still difficult for all of you, 
And I, I hope that, you know, I was supportive during that time. I, and it's interesting because, you know, you've talked to me, the relationship that you've built with my mom over this time and that it's a hard thing for you too. And I get that. And sometimes I think when we're really close to the situation, we do kind of tend to forget that because we're thinking about our own stuff. And so in remembering the impact that it has on others too, I mean, like I said, when you're in the situation, it's really hard to maintain that space for that sometimes in your head. And, you know, and, and I think sometimes even for me, I, I had to sit back and realize that it was impacting me in a lot of ways because once again, I've known your mom now 26 years. Yeah. It's one of those things when, you know, and, and because of the way I feel for you, I understand that on, on a different level as well. Mm -hmm. But trying to navigate all of that and to be supportive of you um, because you're the one who needs that support right now. In, in a different way, mm -hmm. you know, and, but also remembering that if you have a connection to those people and you're being supportive to also be aware of what it's doing to you. Mm -hmm. Cause I had to, I had to do that. And I had to have a conversation with you. I said, you know, this is kind of hard on me too. <laughs> you know, I've known your mom a little bit and um, for a little while now. And I think that was helpful for you. It was. It wasn't at first. I felt <laughs> like, you know what, this is my mom. And what are you talking about? Your grief or your concern or your, you know, I did. I was at first um, like that. And I think it's just a, a tendency that people have probably, you know, to probably go to that space. But remembering that, like I said, holding space for that person, too, and realizing it is impacting you, too. And. And I appreciate, like I said, how supportive of you are of me and the decisions that I'm having to make, and I'm not doing it alone. So that's important. Well, but I think that it was important for me to speak up too. Yeah. Because I think then it it I think it helped you, and I think it really helped me mm -hmm. because I was just kind of burying all that, yeah. you know, and just kind of trying to figure out how I navigate everything, you know, and mm -hmm. what needs to be done first. <laughs> I kind of go to that place and I thought, you know, I don't want to do that. I want to be able to be present in the moment with what I'm feeling and also to acknowledge what you are feeling and how do we do this together? Yeah. So I'm glad you did talk to me about it, but yeah, it was she got a little nicer after that. No, <laughs> yeah. At first, I wanted to go to that place of being kind of angry. <laughs> and I think that's the thing. That's the other thing that I think is really important is that that anger will sneak up on you. Mm -hmm. But I don't. It's not anger like that. It is really grief. It is really that process, that anger that we feel when we feel like we shouldn't have to lose this person if they, you know, I mean, I think there's all of these things that kind of start to take place with it. And I think that that's where you've kind of come more to that radical acceptance as you talk about. Right. You know, and, and like I said, it's, it's been a struggle, I think more so in the last, what, six months. Well, no, we went out there in May. So mm -hmm. May is kind of when we started having more of this um, decline. And we'll be going out and seeing her again uh, really soon. Uh, yeah. So we've got that all scheduled and stuff. And once again, you know, I get it. That and, and you know, even for your uncle, so appreciate him. Yes. Yeah, I, I he, he him being able to spend the time that he does with her and how he communicates with me. I appreciate that so much. It, Cause it's a little bit of a drive for him to go from where he lives to where she's at. Right. And, you know, he, he'll just go sit there with her for three or four hours, even when she's not awake or she's not coherent. Mm -hmm. I know this is very difficult on him as well. Right. And, and, but just how much uh, appreciation we have for that yeah. is really, really important. Yeah, so it's it's important to remember and value those people that are, you know, they're they're doing their best to hopefully be supportive and sometimes like I said it can, comes across sometimes you think you think I'm just not doing enough. But it's it, it's really like I say those things that you have to realize it's it's your emotion and the things that you're going through that's driving that. Yeah. So 
I mean, and one of the things is, is in sharing this story of this journey that we're on is that we wanted to do it because we know other people are experiencing it. And, you know, just to know that you're not alone in these things. And we appreciate that you're listening to our story because I think that's even in a way very helpful just to be able to talk about it in, in a way and to share that, you know. Mm-hmm. It is, I mean, it's not a really a pleasant topic, but, you know, we, we talked about, you know, there's people going through those, these kinds of struggles and it's something very real. And we talk a lot about relationships and, and just that connectivity that we have with one another and how we can support one another. And hopefully you have that support too if you're going through something like this. Yes. And if you don't, go find that support. Yeah. You know. Yes. Share your stories even with us and you can do that. Uh, we're going to post some question, a question on our podcast about, you know, what your process is and that. So, mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. So if you uh, want to follow us on Spotify, we're on there. We're on uh, all the major platforms that you listen to your podcasts on. We also have a Facebook page and Instagram. And we really appreciate the support. We appreciate people um, liking our podcast, and uh, you know, we want to continue to do this. We think it's important and valuable. So Mm -hmm. thank you so much for your support, and we'll be back next week. Mm. Bye. Bye.